Welcome everyone to another Jags podcast, episode 53, here with Jason, Joey, and myself. We're going to be talking tonight about the Jaguars' new offensive coordinator. We're going to be talking about the Jags hosting, in quotations, uh, the Houston Texans in London as a home divisional game. Also about the conference championship games and the Super Bowl, we'll touch on those as well. And as always, Twitter questions from you, our listeners. Before we do all those things, we want to remind everyone that we are on Twitter at Another Jags Pod, Facebook and Instagram at Another Jags Podcast, and don't forget, we're also on YouTube. If you go on YouTube and search Another Jags Podcast, you'll find all of our episodes there, and you can post comments to those episodes, and we will reply to those as well. I know we have a few loyal listeners on YouTube, so thank you guys for that, and ladies, we appreciate all of your support and input. So guys, let's get right to it. I think the major news of the week for the Jaguars is they hired a new offensive coordinator who is a former offensive coordinator recently fired of the Minnesota Vikings, John DiFilippo, who I think we're just going to call DiFilippo because when you have a last name like that, why even bother with a first name? Not JDF? Not JDF. Well, I mean, I I suppose. (laughs) I like DiFilippo. I've already heard some people say just calling him Flip. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Although I like the DiFilippo. I like (laughs) DiFilippo. I'm good with that. I do too. I like that a lot. So... First impressions, what do you think of the hire? Like it, don't like it, don't really care? I'm going to jump out with some praise for uh, Jason and you last week. I mean, I think you guys nailed it. I mean, he's a glorified quarterback's coach is what it seems like. I mean, I think you guys hit the nail on the head. Marone, I think with that hire, it solidifies the fact that Marone is taking over more of the play calling duties, and he's a stud quarterback coach. I mean, he wasn't a great offensive coordinator, but there's no doubt that he can handle quarterbacks really well. So I I think that just – puts it all in focus he coached under tom coughlin in 05 and 06 so that's a cool connection there i guess but if you look at the other coaches he's coached under lane kiffin tom cable rex ryan dennis allen tony sperano mike petten doug peterson and mike zimmer a lot of fired coaches that is the most (laughs) unimpressive (laughs) list of coaches i've ever heard in my entire life but you said peterson though right yeah yeah okay super bowl winning okay accomplished head coach i'll give you that but yeah so i'm i'm cool with it yeah i'm cool with it i guess people call him a quarterback whisperer that's that's kind of a stretch for me but uh he can't be worse than hackett you know so we'll i'll take him so do you think there's any like truth to the fact that that kind of makes foals who we're going for? Well, that's what I was going to ask, Joey, because to your point, you were saying, yeah, he's a a quarterback guru. He was Nick Foles' quarterback coach last season when the Eagles won the Super Bowl. He he was credited a lot to the transformation of Nick Foles, and it's probably why he got the offensive coordinator job in Minnesota. Yeah. So does, is that what it means, that he, they're going to go after Foles, or does it mean that his ability to coach up a quarterback means that they're going to draft a quarterback? Which do you think they would, be, they would lean towards with DiFilippo as the OC now? Honestly, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I personally don't think, just from everything I'm hearing and just kind of my gut, that we're going after Foles at this point. But, I mean, there, there is the obvious connection there. I mean, he could reach out to him in a second and say, hey, we're back. Come work with me. I just don't see them making that just from a money standpoint, like solely. Well, before we get into the money situation, which I think is interesting to look at, if we look at the quarterbacks that Di Filippo has coached as either a quarterbacks coach or an offensive coordinator, he's coached four that were 24 years old and younger, and four that were 28 years old and older. So he's had equal experience with both. The four. Young guys were Mark Sanchez as a rookie, Terrell Pryor in his second year, Johnny Manziel as a rookie, and Carson Wentz as a rookie. The two guys older than 28, four guys older than 28, were Josh McCown at 28, Carson Palmer at 33, Josh McCown again at 36, and Kirk Cousins this year at 30. Okay. Mark Sanchez as a rookie wasn't bad. No. Actually. First couple of years, he, he did okay, and then he quickly digressed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, yeah. I'm just glad we got somebody as an OC. 
I mean, <laughs> I mean, at that point, I'm like, dude, just yeah. come on. At least we've. But heard how of this about guy. the Packers hiring Hackett? I know Hackett. Man. That's like that's like you get fired and you get a raise. Right. <laughs> yeah. Who, who, I mean, the trade-off yeah. is you have to go live in Green Bay, Wisconsin. True. But, yeah. And we, you don't know how that coach. I mean, who, how he's going to be up there. So plus, I mean, I think Rogers basically calls the plays there. It sounds like he does. But, you know, who knows? I think he's more of like a. Can you go shine my shoes? Yeah, pretty right. much. Like, hey, where, where, where's my coffee? I'm excited to see what he does under Rogers. I wonder if we'll see some of the same plays we saw that he tried to do here with Blake and then Rogers. Well, that, that was always the question about Hack is we don't right. really know who, who he is right. as a coach. Yeah. What was, about this? Did DiFilippo in his interview say, I can fix Blake? Absolutely not. I don't watch interviews the way you do. I, I, mean, watch I know you watch every post game conference and interview. I did not. I, I did not watch it. I'm, I'm completely like just asking. Oh. Actually, he did say, he goes, I can fix Blake. And then there was like a three second pause and everyone started laughing. <laughs> <He's still> like, <laughs> like, hey, each other on the back. Right. 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 I like this guy. <laughs> He's funny. Bunch of back slaps and high fives. Right. I, I don't know. I mean, honestly, I don't know what to think about D Flippo. He's been in the league for a while. To me, he's just another offensive coordinator that's been fired a bunch of times, like all the rest of them. So. Right. I, I feel the exact same way. I think you have a handful of, and I mean a, like a few, offensive and defensive coordinators that really make a difference on a team. And other than that, it really goes to the head coach. Yeah. And I really think so. And I think more than anything, like, like Joey was saying, this is a Marone hire. And so I think that's really what it boils down to. Although... Hackett was a Maroon guy as well, so yeah. who knows who knows what this is going to look like. But I, I don't think we're going to see suddenly this transformative offense because we have a new offensive coordinator on staff. I just I just don't think it's going to happen. If you if you were uh, had your ears closed to the news of what was going on and you looked out on the field between last year and this year, besides the new players that we're going to have, I don't think you're going to see a stark difference. I, th- I think what makes a difference is the players, and hopefully we bring in some new players. Yeah, I mean he's a guy. Exactly. And it, I mean, I'm not upset or excited. I mean, yeah. he, he's a guy. So yes. fill that spot, check the box, move on. Right. Now, let me, let me ask you guys this. I'm going to go off script right, right off the bat here. Ooh. Right off the bat and, and kind yeah. of put you on the spot. Because we're, we're listen, we're going to be talking about it until March or late April on who the Jaguars quarterback is and all that stuff. Let's just address really quickly. What is your ideal scenario for the Jaguars quarterback situation now not well if they can afford or if they do this no what throw the ifs out the window and just if you could have your druthers who would the quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars be next season I'm gonna jump all over this one because <laughs> Flacco at a bargain Bridgewater if not that's a year stop gap offensive line in the first round Greer in the second round ugh and then what? God, it's such an Greer ugly... Greer starts the second year or halfway through the first year. Because he's okay, uh, an absolute stud. Okay, so, so you're saying, ideally, Greer is, 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 is yes, the quarterback. absolutely. Okay. He's the, he's the franchise guy. Yes, and you don't have to sell the house to get him. Okay. I'm going to go the complete opposite direction as that, and I'm going to say, for me... Whoa, whoa, shocker. Yeah, I'm going to say, for me, ideally, it's Tyrod Taylor in as the free agent quarterback and Kyler Murray as the drafted quarterback. That's my ideal situation. Oh. That's right. I'm on that bandwagon. Let's go. I'm almost out of breath where I can't yeah. speak because I'm, I'm, I'm laughing How so much hard more exciting is that than freaking, who did you say? Joe Flacco and Will Greer? Dude, Come did, on, did, dude. Did you happen to listen, because you don't listen to any interviews or press conferences or oh. players speaking or anything. I did can't you think listen to Greer? Boring. Did you oh listen to God. Greer at the Senior Bowl? I saw Will Greer overthrow a receiver in the middle of the field. Did you listen to Greer at the Senior Bowl? Listen to his no, answers to the questions. No. Listen to his maturity. Enlighten our listeners, Joey. What did he say? He had like a 10-minute segment where he, he went over the fact that, you know, it's great to be here because they know who I am. I can I can talk to the coaches. You know, I was in a Florida offense that was a run-first, run-heavy offense. Then I went to a spread offense. He's like, I- I- I've learned my football IQ is off the charts at this point. Talked about his family. He's married. He has a kid. The guy's mature as all get out. And he even said during that, he's like, nobody outworks me at practice. He's like, any coach that brings me in will be impressed because nobody outworks me. Would you say, the all-important question, would you say that he has a chip on his shoulder. He absolutely <laughs> does. And he's got a backstory. What a boring quarterback. He's overcome his back. He's not his, boring His whatsoever. mechanics are bad. He, his mechanics aren't bad. He's got a gun. He, he's, he, he's accurate when he wants to be. The only thing questionable about him is his decision making. 
And we were at West Virginia. Who gives a crap, man? Go for it. Only thing is decision making. I would say his mechanics aren't great either. But that's just me. What do I know? All right, Denny. I mean, we looked at a... I mean, we saw videos today where he was like overthrowing... I mean, we saw one where he overthrew a receiver. But that was enough for me. <laughs> overthrew a receiver in the middle of the field, wide open. I'm good. And who doesn't overthrow receivers? Kyler Murray. <laughs> That's because he can't throw that high. He's only like five eight. He has a, probably a better arm than Will Greer. <laughs> hey man, I mean, I, I hope your Tyrod Taylor love. I have absolutely no like understanding of whatsoever. That's how I feel about Joe Flacco. I don't love Joe At Flacco. Least... I'm playing with Joe Flacco for seven or eight games if we can get him in a bargain. I don't. That's what like I feel Joe about Flacco. Tyrod Taylor. At least Tyrod Taylor can move the ball. Well, let me ask you this, Joey, to, to interject if I may. <laughs> What's the point in, and I mean this, what is the point of bringing in Flacco for six games? Why not just, if you're going to go Greer, why not just start him? Because I, I think that the transition from college quarterback to pro quarterback, you need a little bit of time. I, mean, I don't think you can bring anybody in unless you're a luck or somebody of that stature. There's nobody there that can do that. Well, let me just, let's, just looking at the bigger picture, though, if, I mean, do you think with Flacco slash Greer, as the quarterback going into next year, that they're going to win the division? I think it gives us an okay shot, but I don't think we're winning the division no matter what happens. Wild so card? Eh, possibly. Okay. But I think that would be like our best case scenario. I mean, if we sell the ho- house and like trade up to go for Haskins, I mean, then we don't fix all our other spots. We're not winning the division. If we get foals, I think money wise, we don't have money to do. Th- I mean, I think next year, best case scenario is probably wild card. What about you, James? What's your what's your best case scenario for next year? My best case scenario is we do trade up and get Haskins. I think he's I think he's the the only real quarterback prospect in this draft. So Haskins the D.D. Westbrook and hopefully that works out type of thing. Ah, there's I mean, there's other listen, you can spend money outside of in free agency and there's still you know, they have a high second round draft pick that they could trade up back into the first round and get a weapon. There there's other options, but to me, if you don't fix the quarterback, all those other holes that you're filling don't matter at all. And so get the guy that is going to be the future, and I'm just not sold on Nick Foles. I'm scared of that possibility. I know it seems like everyone and their brother is assuming the Jaguars all but have him. He might as well get fitted for his uniform and start looking for homes in Jacksonville. But, it, I mean, are you all – if that happens, are you over the moon about that? No, oh, I mean – I think everybody's trying to talk themselves into him because he's the best available. But the best available, it doesn't necessarily mean good or even great. I mean, he's well above average, but... Good, great, or Greer. <laughs> I don't hey. think we can afford Foles. I don't That's think my problem with Foles. I agree. But, but if we could, would you be okay with that? Like, he's yeah, not a franchise I think Foles is better than... I think he gives us a better shot than ha- than uh, Haskins does. I agree. For, for one year or I think for Foles the foreseeable will, future? Yeah, Foles will give you three to five, I think. And, I mean, Foles has shown you what he is. He's not bad. He's pretty good. But, I mean, he is going to need a, someone, some team around him. So, if you can get a first-round pick, lineman or receiver, bring someone in like that, I think you're good. But, I mean, I think you just go for Kyler Murray and you just dominate for the next 10 years. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'm okay with that. As long as we don't take Dookie Boy, I'm good, honestly. like A lot of people are stretch saying for, the I know they are. Him. Stretch for Foles. Take I'm good with pretty much anything but taking that guy. What What if they take Daniel Jones in the second round? Where they would? would he's not going to be there in the second round, though, man. He's going to show out in the in the combine. I mean, he's I don't think he'll all, be in the second round either. Either. Yeah, he's got all those attributes that people are going to reach for, uh, even though he threw 16 touchdown passes. What if they What if they trade back into the first and take him then at like 18 or 20 or something around that area? <sighs> Maybe. All right. I've seen stuff that has Drew Locke being the number one quarterback taken. Really? He's got a cannon. He's apparently balling out at the Senior Bowl, and he's just – they're saying he has the best arm they've seen in a long time. Wow. The and dude has a good arm. He's got a cannon. If you watch his highlight film from Missouri, he makes throws that are pretty unbelievable. And he really does. And he's showing out, like, charisma-wise as well. Like, he's doing the whole, like – I guess he had some – I don't know what his off-the-field issues were, but I guess he did at some point. And then he's like joking about, yeah, he cheated on a science test in seventh grade and told his mom about it type of thing. So he's like really showing that he's that guy that can get in front of the camera. Showing his As opinion. in maybe in New York? Yeah, like in a big market for sure. That'd be nice. So here's a dream scenario then. The Giants take him and the Jags don't have to trade up at all and they get Haskins. Well, I mean, that's... <laughs> 
Would you be happy with that? I would be very happy with that. Okay. Sign me up for that. I just... Jason? Oh, Jason? I like Haskins, man, but I just can't shake Kyler Murray. I think Kyler Murray is going to be a better quarterback than both of them. I can't get on the Kyler Murray train. I just can't. He's he's just so small. <laughs> he's so small. I mean, he's, I mean, he's like not a, much bigger than me. Football's changing, though. You can't hit quarterbacks. You can't, you can't do anything like that. Like, you, you can't even Dude, you can't hurt. put your body weight on quarterbacks anymore. He like, can it's, get hurt in practice, man, just from like a bump in the locker room. I mean... Did he, if he was thick and short, uh, I'd probably have a, less of a problem with it. Yeah, I'm, I'd be nervous about that. I know. I I, and, I, and speaking of you know, what we're hearing, all the fodder of the draft, I'm hearing that he's not going to get picked in the first round at all. Yeah, and it's all just a leverage move for baseball anyway, it seems right. like. I mean, I think if he doesn't get taken in the first, he's going the baseball route. I mean, what we also have to understand about the draft is the draft, besides the Super Bowl, is probably the NFL's biggest event right i mean wouldn't you say i mean i I don't know ratings wise but in terms of just marketing and and all the talk and everything that they get so we're going to hear for the next three and a half months or whatever it is all sorts of different scenarios which is exactly what the nfl wants so we're going to be hearing kyler murray is going to be taken in the top three and we're going to be hearing that he's not taken until mid second round so or whenever you know And, and the same with a lot of these quarterbacks so that's what makes it fun but uh, it's it's interesting that even the three of us have three differing opinions. You know, it's it's it'll be interesting to see how the triumvirate of Marone, Caldwell, and Coughlin what they can come up with because we have seen more. This seems more like Marone's team. I, I would say it's Marone and Coughlin's, and who knows what Caldwell's doing. I mean, they're all kind of tied to this season. Yeah, so we'll see. But. I like how we talked way more about a possible quarterback than the <laughs> offensive coordinator that we just hired, but that just goes to show you the importance yeah. of uh, each position. All right, uh, let's move on to topic number two. It was also announced this week in Jaguars news that the Jags will be hosting the Houston Texans in London as their home game. What do you guys think of that? Is that advantageous for the Jaguars? Do you like that they took a division game out of Jacksonville? And took it across the pond for Jaguar fans to not see. I mean, that's a big that, that's a a big game. Division games are huge. So is that is it better for the Jags because they're used to playing in London, or is it worse because it's not a true home crowd? Well, the only team that I would have rather seen over in that in London would have been the Bucks. But really, besides that, the teams that we get to see at home are way better. Saints, Chiefs. Titans, Colts, I'd much rather see all of those teams than the Texans. I mean, Bucks is, a, you know, a coin flip, but at least that'll be fun because they're close in state rivals, but it's probably our worst game on the schedule, so I'm cool with it. I mean, I, I think it's a slight advantage for us, so I'll take every advantage we can get next year. I mean, yeah, I mean, you don't want to see a divisional game anywhere but here, but, I mean, honestly, we play better there, so. Yeah, we may. I don't mean it so much in terms of who would we as a fan, like obviously Drew Brees is going to be in Pat Mahomes is going to be more exciting to watch in person because it'll be our only chance to see them until who knows when, especially Drew Brees. But I just mean in terms of getting the win, you know, is it better for the Jags to play here in Jacksonville against the Texans than it is in London? And, uh, you know, we, you know, we do play better. It seems in, in London, we didn't win last year against the Eagles, but it was a close game, a game, we probably should have won, but at the same time, it's not that home crowd. It's not that in, intense. You're not gonna. The Texans aren't gonna feel the hatred in London that they will if they had they played here. I mean, it's a lot of a lot of people hate the Texans here. I don't yeah, think I you're mean, gonna get that in London. I mean, have we lost to them with that hatred here? So I mean, I don't think that really sways anything either way. It gives us a slight advantage in London, in my opinion. So I'm fine with it. Yeah, the Texans have never played a game in London. This would be the first yeah. one, yeah. so that gives us that. Yeah. So. I just thought it was curious that it was a divisional game. Uh, I'm not sure if we played a division opponent there yet. It's off the top of my head. I can't remember. I don't think we We have. We played the Colts over there, did we? We played the Colts. We played Baltimore. uh, Eagles. Played the Jets, I think. Eagles. Jets. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just shocked we got picked again to play over there. Picked again. Come on. (laughs) We have a contract. Is it like permanent? I think it's 2024 now. Is it really? Oh, wow. I don't know when it's still, but we got I think they just extended it. I just yeah. assume they asked the owners and Shad like raise his hand immediately every time <laughs> it happens. Any volunteers? <laughs> Check out these road games, though. 
at LA Chargers, cool. at Oakland Raiders, at Denver Broncos. Mm. I mean, huh. we, we play at Atlanta and at Carolina. That's three like almost West Coast trips if you right. count Denver, which were which, fantastic at those, right? I mean, we didn't have any of those this past year. I think the the furthest West we went was Dallas. Did we play 49ers away? No, that was a year before. That was two years ago. Oh, yeah, the furthest West we went was Dallas. I guess yeah. I don't know where Kansas City is on the map, but those those, <laughs> somewhere those were around at, there. Somewhere around there. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I mean, that's three pretty intense trips right there. It is on paper. Two of them are winnable. I'm not sure the Rams is is very winnable. Or the Chargers. It was the Chargers? Chargers, Raiders, and Broncos. Oh, Chargers, Raiders. Oh, okay. So we are playing the AFC West. Yep. Next and year we have the. How do we play three of them on the road? Then we have who's the other team like? Can you even find them on here? The, uh, it's the Chiefs. We play them at home. Yeah, Chiefs at, Chiefs at home, yeah. Great. Yeah, That's a gimme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you go to StubHub, I'll be posting my... <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that'll, you know, decent home games. We play some good teams. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you, you, we might not win them all, but they're going to be... We're gonna Saints? Good football. It's always hard, you know, from one season to the next to say who's going to be good and who isn't, but right now... <laughs> It looks like a very tough schedule. <laughs> yeah. We'll be we'll be playing in the division where we finished last, and be playing at a, you know two home games: the Saints, who just got robbed of a Super Bowl berth, and the Chiefs, who just missed out on the Super Bowl berth. I mean, that's that's tough. <laughs> that is tough. That's a, it's basically all the playoff teams, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, how that happen? It's crazy. We got Oakland. Did we only win five games last <laughs> Oakland, year? Oakland Jets, Bengals, Bucks. Are this year. Or wait, Bengals, Jets. I guess Bengals, Jets aren't announced yet? Should be. Home and away should be announced, just not when. Yeah, the dates. I don't know about the Bengals and Jets. For some reason, they're not on here. It's weird. Yeah. Won't matter if we uh, go get Daniel Jones as the quarterback, though. It won't matter? It won't matter. Yeah. Or will it, Joey? Please stop speaking that out loud. <laughs> you you don't... <laughs> It just blows my mind that you're so like confident in Will Greer, and then you're like, "Oh, don't get Daniel dude." He Jones. threw 16 touchdown passes for in college. You don't have a problem with that? No. Because the year before he was really good. <laughs> Does he have a strong arm? I mean, what's I know he's he's yeah, got he's the size. Five, yeah, he's huge. huge. Is he Josh Allen from Duke? He d- runs the RPO and he's big. That's it. Now the RPO is uh, ask Chris Collins. Six five two twenty. The NFL. That's good. Then, then why couldn't he do it? MVP of the Quick Lane Bowl. <laughs> the what? MVP of the Independence Bowl. See, that's Come it. on. That's, no. a, that's a resume. I almost want to see them draft him just so I can watch Joey's reaction. <laughs> oh it, might, it might be worth three years it of It probably would be. Like, yeah, it would. And that's who they're probably going to take. I mean, it's like Blake Bortles all over again. I mean, come on. Crappy well, conference. Big quarterback. Can run a little bit. Developmental. Let's yeah. develop him. It's the intangibles. He, oh. he completed 63% of his passes. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. 16 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. What's his average yards per pass? Yards per pass or per completion? Whatever. I mean, they're two different things. Okay, <laughs> per completion. Sorry. <laughs> uh, it's not a pass if nobody catches it. I could. I mean, it's still a pass. It's an attempt. Yeah. Per okay, completion. here, let me do this math for you real quick because I'll have to do the math. 2, 8, 36 divided by 270. do 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 10.5 yards per attempt. Yeah, that's, that's a first down every throw. That's a first down every throw. <laughs> Move those chains. And Come he, on. And he only threw for 2,800 yards? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, did he not play half the season? He played in the ACC. On the worst yards, team in the 2,800 ACC. 2,800 yards and 16 touchdowns, and you're good with that for our first round draft pick. Sure. He played at Duke. What do you want him to do? He could follow the second round. We, we don't know. Possible. Dude, he was the quick lane bowl MVP in 2017. <laughs> he did show out in the bowl game. I will give him that. He's he economics played very major. well. Econ? Yeah, you gotta give him that. <laughs> hey, he's smart. Uh, I mean, he's gotta be. He's, yeah, he's from Duke. Great. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> I, it's not that I'm in love with him. I'm just, I'm just surprised that you are so high on Will Greer, and then you're so quick to discount Jones. Well, I mean, Greer also says that he loves Jacksonville. It's close to Gainesville. Still has. Well, you, ties I don't care there. if he likes Jacksonville or not. Who well, cares? And it doesn't and help him throw that, touchdown passes. He loves football. That that is his life. He's everything in his entire life has been set up for this moment. Not a Kyler Murray where, hey, I'm maybe a baseball player, maybe a football player. I'm gonna take who's gonna pay me the most. I want a guy with passion, man. A winner. 
<laughs> Will Greer's 6'3", 217, man. You can't complain about Kyler Murray's size and then be like, oh, 6'3", 217. That's, Are you kidding me? That's big enough. <laughs> You're talking about like 50 pounds difference in like six inches at oh. least. Kyler Murray could get to 200 pounds by the time the first season, <laughs> first game of the season starts. <laughs> you don't think that's going to affect the way he runs whatsoever or moves? If he puts on 30 pounds or 20-something pounds? <clears throat> that's a Leonard Fournette diet. <laughs> <laughs> that's the... <laughs> Golden Corral, man. Bring it on. I don't know. I think if Daniel Jones would have played for West Virginia, he would have had 37 touchdowns and eight interceptions, just like Will Greer did. They don't have a good econ apart, uh, department. <laughs> and if Will Greer would have played at Duke, he probably would have had similar stats as Daniel Jones. Well, Will Greer was better than going to Duke. That's the point. Daniel Jones wasn't. He went to Duke. Not my fault, bro. You couldn't go to a better school because you weren't a good enough quarterback. Right, I'm, I'm done that. with quarterbacks. Okay. We're talking about something yeah. else. It's been fun. I'm, I'm enjoying <laughs> watching Joey tonight. All kinds of passionate. Let's uh, let's let's get to some Twitter questions. All right. Enough of us. Let's let's hear from our listeners. Yeah. Please, nobody ask about no, quarterbacks. No, please, Daniel Jones, right off the bat. <laughs> if his name was Casey Jones, would you want him? Uh, probably, well, Davy Jones. At least you sound oh. like a pirate. Well, at that Casey point. Jones. Come on, man. Yeah, Casey. I'll, I'll go with Casey. Okay. This first question is from. Jason, and he's at Rat HCP. He says, I love that we signed Jared Wilson. He's got high potential. Do you guys think this resigning could mean the release trade of Tayshawn Gibson? And do you guys think he's capable of being starting safety with Ronnie Harrison? It's a good question. I, I don't know. I mean, it, I don't know if they're going to keep Gibson or not. I kind of hope they do. I think Gibson had a good year this past year. I like that he's honest he he speaks his mind in a in a, I think what a we would call a healthy way to me it, it depends on cap space if they if they can afford to keep him they will and if not they'll let him go but we'll see time will tell I, uh, but some experience back there would be nice so I don't know we'll see I would not have a problem with keeping Gibson at all I mean I don't think he's breaking the bank I don't have my cheat in front of me 7.45 I was about right? to say 7 so yeah, yeah I mean why not? I mean, he he's he's played well. He's been a stand up dude. I mean, he hasn't gotten. Uh, yeah, I don't think we should get rid of him at all. So we save seven point four five if we cut him before June first. I don't think we cut him unless we make a move for a guy like Foles. If we're trying to do that, then I think he's gone because yeah. I mean we say I mean that's seven and a half million we save if we cut him. I mean, you're only saving six million with Bortles. You're saving six million with Jeremy Parnell. You're saving eleven million with Malik Jackson. He's he's pretty high up there as far as what he's getting paid. So I don't know. I could see it. I would hope not though, because I like Jared Wilson as a special teams guy, but I don't like him as a starting safety. Especially if we're gonna put Ronnie Harrison in that other spot. I'd feel way more comfortable with Deshaun Gibson back there with him. Yeah, for and, sure. And I think that really makes it clear the issue with reaching for somebody like Foles is you lose guys like Gibson. Mm -hmm. That's a solid, solid contributor that you don't have to worry about. So, I mean, that's just like James said, red flag, kind of back on quarterback somehow. But Yeah, I mean, Jason's right. He does have high potential, but I don't think he's starter. Are you, are you speaking in the third person right now? <laughs> I, I've been doing that this whole time. James <laughs> likes that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Jason tweeted yeah. himself. So, yeah, I don't know. That'd be interesting. I mean, that's a, that'd be bold. It wouldn't they, surprise me if either, they kind of maybe bold, right? I mean, it could definitely happen. It could happen, but it'd, it'd be bold for sure. All right, this next question is from uh, dot 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 Jags dot dot dot. Oh, okay, and he's he's at Brady Bauer too, and he says, "How nut busting is our cap situation? Can't re-sign Jacker and Gakwe without Ramsey whining." So. Is it Ramsey first, the player with the option, or rolling the dice on other two and prayer to God Jalen understands? First Wait. of all, nut busting. His words, not ours. Yeah, now we're reading directly. Dynamite. We're a clean podcast. We are. Say, say, the, say the actual question in there. <laughs> How nut busting is our cap situation? What, what about Jalen, though? I heard something about Do you Jaylen. resign Jalen first, even though he is an option, or and risk making him mad, or resign Jack and who? And Gakwe. And Gakwe. Oh, okay. Gosh, I mean, I mean, you got to pay Ramsey, you right? You do. You got to pay Ramsey, but right. you would hope 
once again, if Ramsey's a team player, that he would want the pieces around him solidified. You gotta yes. pay Ramsey. You, you gotta you gotta pay Ramsey. I you mean, think if you don't, he Ramsey out. wanted Fowler to stay, so okay, they obviously if, don't care. If you don't pay Ramsey, does he sit out? He won't sit out the season, but he'll he'll probably come late to training camp, which he's done the last two seasons, I think. And anyway, I, I can and, see him sitting out. You know, I mean, you got to pay Ramsey, no doubt. I definitely, yeah, I think they'll pay him if he is planning on being here. He will, we will pay him. That's how I feel. this off season. I think it gets done. They don't have to do it this off. Season. I think it gets done during the season this year. Hmm. That's what I think. And before Jack or Ngakwe. Yeah, I couldn't argue that. I mean, you gotta I, pay the guy. I personally, I like Ngakwe, but I would like to see one more season of him before they extend him to justice. It, it, you just know, to see, yeah, just to see, yeah. just to see. Yeah, I mean, this last year wasn't fantastic. No, I, I think he, you know, he could look at it as this is a chance for me to make more money if I have a good year this year. And increase his value if they wait another season on him. Yeah, I mean, out of those three, I mean, Ramsey's definitely proven himself as an absolute stud. Whereas Jack and Jan have, I mean, they've done good. They've been flashes. I mean, they obviously have the ability, but neither one of them have played near as well as Ramsey. So, I mean, Ramsey's the best at his position in yeah, the league. He's the so best player on the that's, team. That's the, guy that, that's the guy that you shore, shore up first. Yep, I agree. All right. Just for the sake of changing gears a tad, we're going to change gears a tad. This one's from Corey Trent. He's got a... Uh, he comes from a good family. I've heard, heard of that from guy. What I've, heard. I've heard of that guy from somewhere. He goes to Duke. Yeah. <laughs> and he's at C. Trent Marketing. A little plug. And he says, assuming challenges stay limited in number, shouldn't penalties be reviewable, whether from a non or incorrect call? Either can have an impact as large as a turnover. Keeping challenge number capped should prevent overuse ensure strategic use, and maintain game flow. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's tough because I was watching the Saints game on Sunday, and it, they were just an insane amount of commercials. And it seemed, there was times when it just was hard to even get into the game because it seemed like there was a break every other second. And so when you have... Such a terrible non-call, like everyone in the world saw. If you were watching the game, the Saints-Rams game with the no PI call, that that cost the Saints the game. It cost them the Super Bowl, or a chance to you know go to the Super Bowl. Then our our first reaction is to say, well, we need to review more. But you know, is that really the solution to something like to to just uh, to review everything? At some point, do you just take? A lot of the officials off the field and just do a lot of it, you know, by, you know, the, the booth or whatever. I mean, I guess, I guess my, my question is, where does it end? If, if you're going to do it with, with pass interference, because, it, listen, it was, it was an absolutely terrible call. But that, that to me, it just, it's almost like, do we really need a review for, because of something like that? It was so obvious. It was so bad. Like, will that actually happen again? Uh, I don't know. A, that's the thing. That that was a one off, man. I mean that that was so bad. That it that doesn't happen. And honestly, they didn't lose the game because of that. That did result in it at that point, but their play calling early in the game lost in that game. I mean, you get a field goal on that first drive after that turnover, that, that shouldn't have happened. That should have been a touchdown, you win the game regardless of that play. Or at least it changes the dynamic of it. The only thing I've heard that makes sense would be like you have Ed Hockaloo and I think a couple of the other ex refs in the box in a lot of these games. Have somebody like that in all the games and like a a red buzzer that mm-hmm. like if it's just atrocious like that, they can hit it, they see it, play, you know, the refs on the field get it. It's not a coach's call, it's not anything else, it's like something like that. Like an overseer that one-offs every once in a while, but not something that just makes the game even slower. Yeah, and, and that, that's what boggles my mind with replay right now and challenges is the amount of time that it takes for these decisions to be made. I mean, you got to remember... The NFL is a billion dollar machine. And you're telling me that they they don't have the the sophisticated uh I don't know what it is, what word I'm, word I'm looking for, but just the ability to speed this stuff up. I mean, why isn't there a chip in the ball that when it crosses the golden line it says it's a touchdown? You know, why do we have or, to continue first, to look or at first eight, down. or a first down? Yeah. I mean, wh- you're still wh- bringing chains out from like 40 years it's, ago. It's 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 ridiculous. I mean, it really is. And you're right. I mean, they could easily they they have guys up. 
which by the way, I'd like to also say while I'm on my soapbox, the, those in-game commentaries by retired referees is, is the biggest waste of time. <laughs> yeah. It adds nothing to the game whatsoever. Yeah. Why the networks choose to do that and think it adds anything is beyond me. Just stop asking those guys because all they do is ride the line because they don't want to offend the refs that are on the field. So they never make anything decisive anyway. So have those guys up there, and like Joey said, that's a great idea. Boom, it's obvious, it's clear, you missed it. There's, there's going to be human error when, when you have humans refereeing the, in, in all the sports, and in, in it's uh, across the board. So for something that is, was egregious as that, non-call, it could have been easily solved in two seconds. But sometimes there was, I can't remember which game it was, but there was a, a play that was under review. I think it was uh, when, oh, it was when Edelman... They they said the, that the, the punt, punt. Hit, hit him and it didn't. I mean that took forever. It took forever for that to be figured out. And maybe they were trying to figure out where the clock was. But come on, NFL, if you have all this money you, and you're talking about how you want to make the game more watchable for fans, speed that stuff up. Hire a couple extra guys. Spend a little money here or there and make the game more watchable. Because because it's not when when you're constantly stopping, constantly reviewing, constantly challenging. Constantly going to the booth. Why does there? Why do we have to go to New York? Why? Why does there have to be a guy in New York? Why can't there be people in at the stadiums doing that? It, it just add one guy to each each refing refing staff. Anyway, I mean, and for that matter, if you want to continue on the soapbox, why aren't all the NFL referees paid employees, full time employee? I mean, that there's so much money involved in that sport. You can't tell me you can't offer these guys 150 grand a year salary, and that's all they do. Right. I mean, that's ridiculous that they're part-time. It, 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 I, I don't think that's the case in any of the other four major sports where, where the referees, umps, whatever you want to call them, are part-time. Yeah. Even in college. No. I mean, it's, it's absurd. Well, I think you, you guys kind of nailed it indirectly. I mean, these guys are – the NFL is about the money. I mean, think about all the commercial cuts they get on these replays and all the time they're talking, looking at the clock. They get three commercials in every time. And they don't have to pay these refs full time, so they can't be part of a union. I mean, there's, I mean, it's all about the money. It mm-hmm. all comes back to the money. So I think that's what it is. Should you be able to challenge penalties? It's, it's a slippery slope, like you were talking about, James, because where do you draw the line? Mm-hmm. Some games will be called tighter than others intentionally. If there's a chance at, uh, like, if there's a history of like fights or uh, you know brawls between the teams, or, they're going to call it super tight. Or if Brady's involved. <laughs> or if Brady's <laughs> right. involved. Or sometimes there may be a penalty that looked inadvertent, so the ref gives him a warning. Second time, they call a penalty. That stuff can't go to replay because the ref can't be like, oh, well, I gave him two warnings already. You can't replay that stuff. So that's where the human element kind of is tough to review in penalties. This example of what happened in the Saints and Rams game is really clear cut. You could have gone to review and changed it. But most penalties aren't like that. Most penalties... The refs have been watching it. The refs are in a specific position for a reason. There's a lot that goes into it more than just cut and dry, let's review it and call it back. It's, it's tough. It, it's, I understand how it's hard to review. And at some point, I mean, sports have been like that for years. And before replay, you just were screwed, mm-hmm. regardless of you know, what happened. So we're, more, we're better now than we used to be, but we're not perfect. But I don't think it ever will be perfect, or then we'll just playing computer games. And that's kind of the beauty of it. And that's that's also what the NFL wants. They want us talking about this stuff because it it keeps the wheel churning, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and just just to put it in context, Jags fans, remember last year with the whole Miles Jack was in town thing, this was worse. Yeah. This yeah. was worse. This was way worse. <laughs> this yeah. was this was absolutely worse. <laughs> and, you know, for the for the Saints who had such a huge year you know, uh, at home, I mean, they were, they were what, two minutes away, a field goal away. They, they could have just run the clock out, chip shot field goal, and they're going to Atlanta, by the way. They would have been, they would have been dr- driving there for the yeah. Super Bowl. I mean, talk about tasting it. I mean, my goodness. And, and not to mention, I picked the Saints and the Patriots well, to go the to the Super Bowl. Important. I know. I, I had Come it on. right, and, and the refs <laughs> robbed me of having it right. I mean, back to the question as well, though. I, I don't think that everything should be revu- reviewable. Sorry. But, I mean, think about it. The momentum of a game, if you're rolling, it, them reviewing a play that shouldn't have been reviewed could kill and change the outcome of a game just as easy as a bad call. I mean, if you have to stop and wait four or five minutes, three commercial breaks, when you guys had it going, 
give that defense a break, let them get a breather for no reason whatsoever. I mean, that, that could kill it just as easy. So I, I, well, I if you I don't remember think last year, I mean, everyone remembers the Miles Jack call, but most people don't remember that there was a third and like 15. The Patriots were driving in their last drive of the game. They threw it up and they called a phantom pass interference on AJ Boyer. Yeah, it was awful. And if without in the game automatic first down, yep. without that, it's fourth and 15. Are they going to convert that? Maybe. But that's a chance to end the game right there on a terrible pass interference call that there was no contact at all. So that penalty was huge. I mean, that's as big as a turnover. That's what, you know, Corey was asking. I see the, the point, but it's a slippery slope to where you're just reviewing everything. And at, at what is there certain penalties you can review? Can you review holdings? Can you review, you know, face masks? I mean, how many missed face masks and stuff like that do we mm-hmm. see? I mean, we're going to let them review all of those. I mean, it's, it's tough. I mean, it's a, it's a slippery slope. I think the, the league, too, has done the referees a bit of a disservice by how they are making them manage a contact sport by making it non-contact, which, right. is, which is why this non-call is so amazing where they just got absolutely <laughs> drilled and they <laughs> didn't call it. But, I mean, they're, they're making sure that the quarterbacks don't get breathed on, you know? And so it's – I think they've, the league has muddied the waters for the refs and made it a little bit harder for them – to call football. There's you know? so many judgment calls at this point. It, it, it's too, like it's what, too subjective. What's the catch? What's the, I mean, it, it, there's way too, it, it, I agree. And, and this, again, I say not for that call because that was not a subjective play. That was clear to everybody in the world what that should have been called. But overall, yeah, I mean, they're, they've made the job, I think, a lot harder on the refs. So you have to consider that as well. But I think it all goes, goes back to don't, don't necessarily do replay and challenging more but let's let's get full-time referees that are trained all year you only that are better best. at what they that can be better at what they're doing yeah, you only get the best of the best at that point right all right um this is the last of the good questions and there's two terrible questions but okay. i want to get y'all's a, an opinion on them. this question is from pete and he's at coach l tweets he says despite what marone says do y'all think the offensive coordinator hire was made with nick Foles in mind I, mean, I kind of alluded to that earlier. I, just, I really don't think that's why they made that call. I think they made that call because, again, this guy's focus has been quarterbacks for the most part. And whether we get a young quarterback or we're in the game for Foles, I mean, he's the right hire kind of for that spot that we're in. I think if the Jags want Foles, then yes. This is probably a tactic that they're using because there's familiarity there. There's success there. but. There's no, you know, we can't assume 100% that that's what they want to do, in ter- meaning go after Foles. But if, if, if they were saying, we want Nick Foles as our quarterback next year, how about we go get Filippo? that'll help our chances? Yeah, I think, I think that makes sense. Uh, we just don't know what they're thinking. I mean, hey, we, Foles- we don't even know who's, who's drafting right now. We don't even know who that guy is. It, if it's Caldwell or Coughlin or Marone or all three or two of the three, who knows? If Foles takes less money to come to the Jags, then that'll tell that. Right? Zero percent yes, chance. That's not happening. That's not happening. I agree. But I'm saying if he does. I don't think Diff Lippo was hired with Foles in mind. I think he was the best we could get at that point. With the other coaches taking with Kubiak and all these other guys taking jobs other places, he was literally the best player, best coach we could get at that point. So I think that's why. That was what our in mind was. By releasing Niles Paul... We are at basically zero dollars for next year, okay, with money to spend on free agents, okay? Gotcha. We all kind of assume Boyles is going to be gone. So that gives us six. four and a half, uh, six million, yeah. That gives us six million with Bortles gone, okay? So think about what folds would require, 20 to 30. Mm-hmm. We're at six with Bortles gone. Parnell, another six. Okay, that's Parnell, our starting right tackle. Bortles, our starting quarterback, both gone. Get, now we're up to 12, okay? Malik Jackson gives us some decent money. That's a big one. That's a big one, though. He's a good player. So if we cut Malik Jackson, then we're up to uh, he's eleven million. So we're up to about twenty million. So, so maybe Foles at that point, but probably not. So if we sign Foles, then that's it. What about uh, at the cheapest rate possible? Foles coming at twenty million with zero dollars left over. Not a good situation to be in. I don't think they'd make that move. What if they cut Safarian Jenkins? Safarian Jenkins gives them four point seven five million. Okay. That's so now, now we're up to $25 million, mm-hmm. Okay, Still in that whole range. 
Okay, another guy people are talking about, Carlos Hyde. It's 4.75 million. That puts us up to about 30 million. Okay, then the big one is Tayshawn Gibson. 7.5 million. So with Tayshawn Gibson gone, Carlos Hyde gone, Safarian Jenkins gone, Malik Jackson gone, Bortles gone, and Parnell gone, and Hyde gone, we're up to about 37. Plus renegotiate Darcy. Darius, Darius if, we, if we can restructure Darius, we're at, we get to 37 to 40. So that's not a lot. Not a lot of money. And we got a lot of re-signings coming up. We got... Not I, to mention I, other needs. Yeah. You know, wide receiver. <laughs> Offensive line. We have line. to get a tight end at running that back. Point. Right. We have no tight end. We have no running back. We have Fournette and Rawls. I mean, it's mm-hmm. linebacker, safety. Possibly. What are we going to bring in? Jared Wilson's going to start? I mean, it's... I don't know. There's rumors that, you know, Boye could be... Oh, I hope not. Restructured. Oh, restructured. Okay. If Campbell can that, get though. restructured. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it's... I don't know. You're just putting all your eggs in one basket, really, yeah. if you do that. Yeah. Thinking Foles is the real deal. So that, that'd that be tough. That's why I'm saying the money doesn't really jive for me. Last but. last year in the offseason, there was a couple major names, quarterbacks, which you don't see a lot. You don't see a lot of big names being traded and or free agents because it's such a valued position. But Kirk Cousins, Alex Smith, Case Keenum, all making splashes. Worked out for none of those teams. I mean, Smith none. was the only one that it slightly did until he got hurt. Who's I mean, that? Smith. Yeah, yeah. And now he can't walk. Yeah, right. Now he might not ever and play he, again. Even getting infections with his all yeah, that but stuff. The so. other two got hosed, man. Big time. And so, I mean, that that's reason enough to be a little nervous about all that. Which again, I am. Uh, I don't. I don't like the idea of it. You just don't see. Besides Peyton Manning, who no one knew what he was going to do because his broken neck, you know, was really the the last in, you know, quarterback where it succeeded in that. And and Nick Foles is not Peyton Manning, but yeah, it just makes me nervous. But giving him all that money when there's really no precedent of it ha- having success before. Yeah, I agree. I'm trying to think of another quarterback that was a free agent. Tyrod Taylor took his team to the playoffs as a free agent. <laughs> oh, my Lord. That doesn't Tyler count? Taylor. That doesn't count? Tyrod Drew Brees Taylor. was the one before him. Drew that was Brees? the only other one before him. That was, and again, that was an injury thing. What about we Garoppolo? Didn't know if he was going to be great. Uh, Jimmy we don't G's know. still out there, dude. Yeah. We don't know that. We don't know. Matt Castle? Anything for you? Mm. No. Ryan Fitzpatrick. What? We're going to end up with 10 For two home. games? <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, so these next questions. Okay. Okay, first of all, you, you've called out our Twitter I know. I hate here by to do this. Two one of them is one so. of them is, is Patrick Jackson. So we, the first bad question he's ever asked. First bad question he's ever asked. Thousand, and we're right? gonna save that to the end. It's that Al Fowler. Bad. I know. It's that bad. No. no I smell a Dante Fowler question. No. 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 Okay. This question's from Colby Gerrell, and he's at Colby Gerrell nine. He asks, "Resign Dante Moncrief or let him go?" Ooh. Okay, that is bad. <laughs> All right, Colby, I think he's a new like Twitter question. We asker, love you, though, Colby. Right? Colby, please ask another one. We love you. Completely redeem yourself. But yeah, dude, Monk But there is a 0.00000 infinity chance Moncrief is on this team next year. Gone. And he's going to go to the Patriots, and he's going to have like a career year next year. Or maybe Hackett brings him up to Green Bay. Hmm. Rogers to Moncrief. For the win. Yeah. What's sad Oh, is, he didn't catch it. <laughs> <laughs> and they lose. What's sad is that he is a top 10 wide receiver available and as a free agent this year. Once again. But he will not be on this team. Actually. No, no, he will not. Sorry. So I'm going to overpay him again, and he'll put But thank you for now. the question. Thank you for the question. Yeah, yeah. we'd love to hear from you guys. And now finally to our favorite listener, Patrick Jackson, with the worst question I've ever seen him ever <laughs> ask. He says, I, I, I thought I misread this. Like, I thought... I thought I misread this You're question. You're still having a hard time actually reading it. He says, settle a hypothetical debate. I can only imagine he's at a, a bar somewhere. A pub. Having a debate with somebody. And this is an actual debate. He, he's and he is, so, you know what? We're going to ask AJP <laughs> to settle this once and so for all. Angry. You, won't, you won't ask them that question. Settle a hypothetical debate. If you had a free choice between Eli and Brady as an interim quarterback for a couple seasons, who would you choose? What? Really? Like, is there any other Eli besides Eli Manning? Is there another way to spell Brady? Is there another yeah. Brady besides Tom Brady? Like Wayne? Bra- no, that's, yeah, Wayne Brady. <laughs> like, all things being equal? I mean, 
I don't even. Hey, I, don't Patrick, I, I need some YouTube like response to this. I'm hoping Patrick is the one that was like, "You idiot! It's Brady." Uh, he's got to be. And his friend was like, "No, Eli." Hey, English beer is strong. <laughs> like, Eli, uh, Eli I mean, Apple, <laughs> cornerback. Because if it's cornerback, yeah, well, maybe that's what it is. Hey, Eli that... Apple versus Tom Brady, a cornerback. Because Brady's slow. Does that Clemson quarterback go by Eli? <laughs> no. Uh, yes. <laughs> maybe. Maybe he meant someone else, and he just wrote Eli. I don't know, but obviously. Definitely Brady. I did see obviously. somewhere say that Brady wins the Super Bowl this year, retires, Patriots go 1-15 in 15 next year, and draft yeah, Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, the same thing, and then they're good for their 20 years. And you know that's going to happen, too. That's something the Colts, I mean, that's what the Colts do with Andrew Luck. Yeah. So Brady's said he's playing until 45. I don't doubt yeah, that well. in any form or fashion. He might have, yeah. Well, maybe not for the 41. Patriots. Yeah. Maybe for the Jags. Is there interim? Yeah, two years. I don't know. We'll have Eli. <laughs> you know what? I'll take Eli Manning instead. I, I don't get that question at all. I'm sorry, Patrick. That's Greg Brady? <laughs> Peter? <laughs> Brad Harvin at the rundown underscore BH did have a question. Anyone we should keep our eye on in the senior bowl besides Daniel Jones? I didn't want to Is there anyone besides Daniel Joey Jones? Mad. B Rad, that's a horrible question. That should have been lumped in there with the other two. Um, I like uh, everybody. Drew Lock, that one. Keep an eye on Drew Lock. Um, any tight ends? I mean, I mean, no. My my take with the Senior Bowls is, is like if you're playing in the Senior Bowl, like, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I feel you. Well, I feel they you. actually put out. Yeah, I, mean, I thought the same thing. There's 19 Pro Bowlers this year played in the Senior Bowl, so there are good players. What do you mean Pro Bowlers? What do you mean? 19 Pro Bowlers. Oh, oh, that are in the Pro Bowl play. Okay, yes. gotcha. Sorry. Does that count people like Clayus Campbell that are like backdoored their way in? Well, probably, but still. Clayus Campbell did not backdoor his way into the Pro Bowl. He should have been I in mean, the Pro Bowl did, to begin though. with. I am he with did, you. He did uh, technically, but yeah, he, he should have been he in. He did technically, yeah. Ohio State. By the way, congratulations. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Clayus for sure. Campbell. We love Well, well we deserved, love man. Well deserved. Ohio State wide receiver Terry McLaurin, a guy the Jags are reportedly talking to and interviewing. Um. West Virginia quarterback Will Greer. Is he in the Senior Bowl? Yes, yeah. he is. Oh, I didn't yeah, know he was in the draft. He had a terrible throw that was on film, and it circulated Twitter that he just totally overthrew a target. LSU tight end Foster Moreau, reportedly Jaguars on the Jaguars' radar. Yeah. yeah it is what it is. Yeah. Um, offensive lineman Chris Lindstrom from Boston College. Offensive lineman Dalton Risner from Kansas State. Offensive lineman Bo. Ben Schwawel from Wisconsin, wide receiver Terry McLaurin, Ohio State, tight end Foster Moreau, LSU, all courtesy of Zach Goodall at Zach underscore Goodall. But see, that's the thing, though. I mean, those are like your second, third, fourth, fifth round picks that turn out to be like the solid studs of your team, like Ngakwe. Oh, yeah, like uh, Richardson. Or like whoever that from you, NC State. You're taking those rounds, man. I mean, there's that, didn't play a snap. There are guaranteed to be players playing in the Senior Bowl that turn out to be studs in the NFL. Hopefully your team's, I mean, Carr. We coached Carr in the Senior Bowl and didn't pick him. Dave Caldwell. How do you do that? Blake Bortles on the board, you get Blake. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you got Gus Bradley So yes, out the answer there. To the question. You listen, they were at the Senior Bowl, and they're looking at Blake, and they're looking at Derek Carr. One threw a spiral and one didn't. It's obvious <laughs> what you do at that point. One's a natural thrower of the football in, with a brother. that. In one was 6'5". <laughs> And one likes to smoke cigs and shotgun beers. <laughs> a guy I do like is Debo Samuel from West or South Carolina. I've been a big Debo Samuel fan. Debo? Debo. Is oh, he man. on Friday? I'm just going to tuck mine in. <laughs> Debo. The word for today is job. <laughs> J. No, I mean, as, a, as someone who watches most of the Gator games, I've seen Debo Samuels enough to know that he's going to be a good player in the NFL. Kind of reminds me of Percy Harvin a tad. So... Wow. Nice. Bold. Bold yeah. praise. Yeah. All right. I think that'll do it for episode 53. Anything else y'all want to add? I don't know. Are Let's we about... recording another one for the Super Bowl? You think we should we should take a week off like every No, no, I, just, I don't know the schedule of the Super Bowl. I think the Super Bowl is in two weeks. So yes. we, we'll have yes, one. Yes, okay, we will. Okay. Yes, we'll, we'll talk about okay. that. Uh, we'll talk. give our Super Bowl prediction. You know yeah. what? I'm going to say this, though. I don't care. No, nah, me neither. I don't want either team to win. I don't say no. that. I, I, I kind of like not caring, though. It makes the games like way more entertaining. Like, I, if I was a Saints fan, I'd be like so mad right now. Or if I was a KC fan, I'd be so mad right now. The fact that I don't have a dog in the race or a horse in the race, 
Either one. I can flip <laughs> yeah. either way. Get the dog track or the horse track. Dog racing is illegal now in Florida. It, it is. Not yet, technically, right? Is no, it it's really got awesome? like another year. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So yeah. Here comes Rusty. That's right. Um, Point being is like two oh, good no. teams, two good offenses. I can flip back and forth and root for whoever's winning. I don't care. I, that's kind of like, I like that a little bit. My daughter's four-year-old birthday party is that same day, so I'll, I'm going to be like half asleep during it because birthday parties for little kids are terrible. Even when they're your own. Yeah, I don't have to go to that one either. I don't think so. That works out perfect. Yeah. It was a plus two. I don't think I watched a second of the first half of last year's Super Bowl. Too bitter still? Yeah, I yeah. really didn't think I did either. Too yeah. soon? Yeah. I still don't really care. If the Jags aren't in it, <laughs> I don't really care. Yeah, I don't know if I did either, to be honest with you. I, mean, I, I, was... really, I can't even remember last year's game, so I seriously doubt that I did. Well, that's not. That's for other reasons. Well, the Eagles won. Probably true. <laughs> you, were out. You, you were talking about Eli Manning and Tom Brady? <laughs> yeah, it could be. All right, well, that will do it for episode 53 of another Jags podcast. We hope we answer your questions okay and uh, discuss everything that you wanted to hear us discuss. If not, reach out to us on Twitter at Another Jags Pod, Facebook and Instagram at Another Jags Podcast, or comment on YouTube under Another Jags Podcast, and we will, uh, we will talk about your concerns and your questions Next week, episode 54, the league is taking a week off, but we are not. So we'll be back next week with another episode talking all things Jags. We'll be giving our Super Bowl predictions, uh, maybe some prop bets, things like that we'll talk about as well. Uh, And that'll do it, though. Thanks for listening, and as always, go Jags.